Solving two-step equations are pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. However, students still make mistakes time and time again. So what I want to do in this video is look at these four examples and really kind of diagnose what are the common mistakes that I see students making when solving two-step equations because they happen time and time again. And they mostly can be avoided just by kind of using some of the tips that I want to include to avoid making the mistakes. So what are these common mistakes and what tips can we use to avoid them? So in this first equation, I have a 2x minus 4 equals negative 8. Now, if you remember, the reason why we call it a two-step equation is because there's basically two operations that we can apply to eliminate our variable. So our unknown in this equation is going to be this x here. When we're first learning how to do two-step equations. A couple things that I like to do with my students is kind of just like have them do a little exercise where we just kind of identify like what is being applied to this x and we can kind of like verbally talk that out. So you can see here I have this 2. Now this is a 2x. So the implied operation here is this going to be a 2 times x. And then I have this minus 4, right? So therefore, that's going to be a subtracting a 4. So there's two operations that's going on. We have multiplying by 2 and subtracting by 4. Typically, the first thing I like to do with my students to practice is like, just don't move the x. Keep the x exactly where it's at. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a box around it. And what that's kind of doing is like pinning the x. So all we're going to do is practice undoing the operations. But we also have to make sure we undo the operation using what we call the reverse order of operations, right? We have to undo addition and subtraction first, then undo multiplication and division. It's the exact opposite when we're simplifying expressions by following order of operations. So you can see here that I'm subtracting a four. So therefore I'm going to add a four to both sides. And again, remember to use the property of equality, right? Whatever you do on one side, you have to go and do it on the other. So therefore now I'm going to be left with a two X. Remember that X is in a box, right? Is equal to negative eight plus four is in negative four. Now I need to undo multiplication by two. So therefore to undo multiplication by two, I'm going to go ahead and divide by two. And now you can see that my final answer is X equals negative two. Now remember for two step equations, you can always plug that answer back in. But I think once you kind of get an idea of how to apply these operations, you probably won't have the urge to go ahead and check your work every single time. Now the typically in the next example is where a lot of mistakes um, are going to start to occur. And you can see here that I have the X on the right hand side, whereas here I had the X on the left hand side. Now typically it is preferred to solve for an X on the left hand side because the way that we read in the equation, x equals a negative two. So what I usually just recommend students, you know, you can just go ahead and rewrite this with the x on the side, literally just flip the two expressions across the equal sign. So where's the big mistake the students make? They don't look at the sign of their constant. So you can see here, I have a negative 14 plus an x divided by six. Now, again, when we're looking at our operations, right, let's use the little box method here. I'm going to put a box around the x and you could say, all right, what is being applied to this x? Well, a lot of times students will say, well, x is being divided by six. That is correct. Right. And then they'll say it's being added by a 14. Now, again, it's a very important. You're adding a negative 14. So what I would recommend doing a little bit of a tip is always try to write your variable first. Do you see on this example when we're first learn two step equations, it's written as the variable first and then the constant. And then it's not required, but a lot of times when you're first learning how to do this, it's just kind of helpful to, as a quick little reminder of what you're adding and subtracting. So I could swap them to either side. But again, if you're comfortable with solving on the same side, what I would recommend at least doing is rewriting it so the variable is first. Hopefully now what you see here is that, yes, I have my X, right? It's being divided by six and it's being subtracted by a 14. So again, just like my last example, if I want to undo subtracting by four, I added four. So if I want to undo subtracting by 14, I'm going to add a 14. So you go ahead and add a 14 to both sides. And therefore that's going to give me a six equals a X over six. Now the next little mistake that students will make, and I don't know what it is with division, but students really freak out with being able to apply the inverse operations of division. The inverse operation of subtraction is addition. The inverse operation of addition is subtraction. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So the inverse operation of division is going to be multiplication. So if I want to undo dividing my X by six, all I simply need to do is multiply it by a six. And I think maybe it's something with the numerator and the denominator, like on both sides, but you remember, you can think about a six as a six over one. So you can see how these sixes are going to divide to one. And therefore then you'll be left with a X times one divided by one, which is just going to give me a X. But on the right hand side, you got to make sure you multiply that. Right. And again, you could write these both as over one if you really want to. We don't really need to. But again, we're, our final answer here is going to be a six times six, which is a 36 is equal to an X. Now, if you don't like the X on the right hand side, now we can go just go ahead and switch it. Whereas we could say X equals a 36. In this example, again, you can see that my constant is being written in front of my variable. So again, like mistakes are going to happen, right? Students don't really understand what are you doing with the 12? Are you adding the 12? Or are you subtracting the 12? Because this is kind of confusing. There's nothing in front of the 12. So we have to be careful when there's no sign in front of the 12. Like here we had a negative 14. Some students automatically understand that is a negative 14 or you're subtracting the 14. But when we just have a 12, you need to understand that's a positive 12. So that means what am I doing to this X? 
Well, that means I'm actually adding a 12, but students will get confused here and they'll see like a minus sign here and they say, oh, we're subtracting. So therefore I need to add on both sides. No, no, no. Be careful with that. Another actually more common mistake that's going to happen in a problem like this is students will not recognize that I'm multiplying by negative five. So what they'll do is they'll add a five to both sides. And we don't want to do that because you're not adding a five to X, right? What are you doing to the X? And again, the best way to be able to understand or to answer that question is just to go ahead and rearrange it. Okay, so now that I've rearranged it, right, I wrote my variable first. And again, I just make sure I add in a 12 because it's a positive 12. Now, hopefully you can see that my X is going to be added by 12 and be multiplied by negative five. So now if I'm just gonna go ahead and use my inverse operations, I will subtract a 12 to both sides. And then I will divide by negative five on both sides. And you can see here, I get a final answer of X equals a positive five. Now it's written on the right hand side. Now the mistake that usually students will make here is when they're solving for a negative variable. And typically I try to avoid solving for a negative variable because we just have to remember when we're solving for a variable, we want to solve for the positive version of that. So a couple things we, we just need to make sure is when we're finding our inverse operations, we can see that I'm adding a 14 and I'm multiplying by a negative one. So therefore I will subtract a 14 on both sides, right? That's going to be the first thing we're going to do. And that's going to be a four equals a negative W. Now, now, if I want to undo the operation that's being applied to a W, I got to understand like what is happening? What operation is being applied here? Well, when I just have a negative W, you're not subtracting the W. What's actually happening is you're multiplying by a negative one. So therefore I can rewrite this expression as four equals a negative one times a W. Therefore, I'm just going to divide by negative one on both sides. And that's going to give me a negative four equals W, which again, then I can rewrite as W equals a negative W. Four. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you want more examples, check out the playlist I have for you down below. Or if you want more tips and tricks, check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.